Hi there, this is Chris with MuseGrid, and I'm going to show you the Business Catalyst blog list widget and how the settings work and what they do to affect the look and feel of your list view design. So let's jump into our site here. So I've opened up a site and we'll go into this uh, list view here. And we can see we've got the blog list post widget and we've got our breakpoints here and uh, everything's working nicely. Okay, let's take a look at the settings. So first of all, let me move this over here a bit. First of all, we have the blog ID. So this is the ID of the blog um, that you've created in, in Muse in Business Catalyst, sorry. And the um, the ID, you'll get that from the blog in the URL in the blog list ID. So we'll show you that in a different video and Jason's shown you that in, um, in the demo video as well. But if you put a minus one in there, what that will do is it will collect all of the articles across all the blogs, if you've got multiple blogs, and put them into that list. So if you've just got one blog, you can just leave that as is. Now, if you're using blog tags, you can also list those here uh, with commas to separate them so that you can pull in just specifically tagged articles. That can be useful if you want to have um, feature, feature articles in a section of your page. Then we have the blog list count. So how many articles do you want on the page? So depending on um, how you've split up your breakpoints, um, you may want 12 or 16 or, or so on, or you may want, um, you may want lots, you may want up to a hundred or however many you want. So that's what the blog list count is. And that will show the latest articles at the top first. Then we have the show date. So with the date, we can switch the date on and off. And if we pull up the, if we pull up the, um, the actual widget the list view here you can see that we have the date here well we can switch that on and off okay so that's um, one thing that we can do there let me pull this back a bit okay so then we have um, the date spacer so again let's take a look at our list view here that sets the space between the title and the date there so if you've got the date showing you may want to change the space between those two for the particular look that you're looking for then we have show description we have show read more show the image and show the shadow so again let's take a look at what those do so this is the um, description here this is the read more button um, and then this is the image obviously and then we have a shadow on and off so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to switch the shadow on and I'm going to republish this and then we can take a look and see what it looks like with the shadow and the shadow has got a hover effect to it as well and one of the great things you'll find with this uh, new BC widget is that when you publish um, everything stays intact and, and nothing gets messed up when you publish so you can make any alterations and republish and test things out and none of your um, your business catalyst or your muse content is going to get messed up so this is just about ready to to refresh now and while we're waiting for that to refresh I just wanted to let you know about some of the other things that you see on the page. Yes, there are some other Business Catalyst widgets on this page that um, are Easter eggs and they will be coming to you shortly. So we're just doing some final testing on those and then you'll be able to use lots of other new Business Catalyst widgets that will make your life working with Muse and Business Catalyst an absolute joy. So we're really looking forward to showcasing you those. But at the moment, we're just focusing on blogs because obviously that was the most uh, requested and most required and useful um, interaction with Business Catalyst right now. So we're just about done, there we go. So let's uh, just refresh this page. So we can see that at the moment, we don't have a shadow on there. So I'll refresh. And now we have that shadow showing and as we hover over we get that nice hover effect now what if we wanted to change the spacing in between each article well that's managed click ok there that's managed by the spacing and padding controls before before we get that let's take a look at the column controls now the column controls we have four although in um, with design kit enabled um, patterns we have multiple breakpoints but when we're dealing with 
th these particular widgets, we're using a, a flex grid layout and we're using um, four specified device types. Now, what that will mean is that in between those breakpoints and the design kit breakpoints, the um, because this is a fluid, um, a fluid breakpoint, a fluid um, responsive widget. All of your content will fit nicely in, it doesn't matter really how many breakpoints you've got. But what we want to do is we want to tell the widget what we want to do on various device types. So we can choose between one and four columns. So on a small screen, we, like a mobile device, we only want one column. On a um, mobile device on landscape, we maybe want two columns. On a standard screen, like a tablet or uh, on a smaller browser on a desktop, we want three columns. And then large, we're going to go up to three columns as well. Now, if you were using Fluid, you might want to switch to four columns. You could set those all to be... Sorry about that. I just had a sneeze, but I didn't want to sneeze on screen. So um, with, um, with your design, you could have a single column width if you wanted to on all of these devices or you can handle this however you like but we've set a standard setup which should cater to most people's requirements now um, the orphan item justification sometimes you may have as you're writing the articles you may have a row of three where just there's only one um, item in that list so you want to specify what happens to that orphan item does it justify to the left to the right or in the center so you can set that there as well so you've got quite a bit of visual control there so that's the column controls to do with the responsive um, layout of the list view then we have the spacing and padding and if you remember we said about the if we go back to our design here the spacing in between each item so this is where the spacing and padding controls come in so the space between each item is controlled by this here, so we can change that. Now, the um, because we're working in um, EMs for this, what we've done is this isn't um, this isn't a pixel control, but this is a um, a width set by the typography. So if you wanted it, so at the moment it's set to one. So if you wanted the space narrower, you would obviously go down if you want it wider. And you can adjust that and because you can republish and take a look and view. You can pretty quickly judge what you want. And it's it's um, uh, not difficult to get to the point where you get your spacing just right. So that will affect the spacing on the outside of the list view item. So that affects this spacing here. Now, if we want to affect the spacing inside, then we use the padding here. So at the moment, we've got a top padding of 15 and then a bottom padding of 5 and then 5 around. But I'm going to increase that to, I'm going to put them all to 20. Okay. And I'm going to reduce this spacing here to, let's say, 1 point, uh, 0.8. Now we can also control the item corner radius. So this will change the corner radius of each individual list item, but it also changes the corner radius, the top left and top right corner radius of the um, image as well, so that it all matches in. So let's just change that to, uh, let's say five. And then the highlight color, we'll leave that just as is. Okay, so let's publish that now and let's see how, what changes that has made to our design. It shouldn't take too long to publish this time around because it hasn't got that much to update. So that's going nice and quickly. We're using the Muse 2018 as well. We're finding it being pretty stable. Uh, I've had a couple of little crashes, but nothing major. So, okay, let's take a look at this page now. So we remember before we've now changed the spacing. So let's refresh the page. And we can see now that we've got, we've reduced the amount of space in between each item, but we've increased the padding on the inside. So that looks a, a lot neater now. We could maybe increase it to maybe 30 pixels and that would still look nice and neat. So let's just go back to the final settings then in this widget. And we can see that in the text controls, now the text controls, we have title font size, title font weight, and then we have the description length and the truncation. So let's take a look at how that applies. So this is the title. We can change, because we're applying a 
um, font to the widget itself. We've got a font style uh, or a font selected with um, that's used throughout the card so we get this consistent nice neat look but we might want to increase the weight or the font weight of the title and we might want to increase the size or maybe reduce the font weight and increase its size we can also increase and decrease the amount of characters shown in the description and what happens at the end so the truncation at the end what, how are we going to finish that off with an ellipsis or maybe um, some arrows or, and so on so we've got those controls as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a font weight of let's say let's choose 600 and I'm going to up this to 22 and then um, I'm going to change the length of characters let's leave that at the end let's leave that all as is and let's publish this so again, it shouldn't take too long to publish because we haven't updated much. And when I was saying before about the 2018 uh, edition, and we are finding it quite stable, um, but if you find any bugs, please let us know about it. Okay, so let's take a look what happens now when we refresh the page. So we can see now that our um, our article heading has taken on this uh, nice big bold font and at the moment I think we've just got Arial applied to it so let's just do one last thing and let's take a look at the text the font that's been applied to it and we can see at the moment it's nothing so it's just a default but this is how easy it is to change the type of your blog so we're just going to go to let's say um, Open Sans it's a nice font and it's got lots of uh, font weights in it so it's good to choose a what I mean by that if you're not quite familiar sorry if you already know and I'm telling you something that you already know but we can see with open sans if we go down to if we go down to our list here open sans you can see that we've got a light a regular and a semi bold note that's probably a 100 font weight this is probably 300 that's usually a regular and semi bold by might be 500 so if you wanted to have something with a much heavier um, set of um, font weights to it so a bigger family let's choose Lato that's a popular font and then if we go to down here we can see that Lato has actually got black bold hairline light and regular so that would be the equivalent of let's say um, light would be 100 regular might be 200 or 300 hairline might be 200 bold 500 and then black might be even 900 so we'll choose Lato for this and then let's republish so now we've applied the font to the actual widget and that means that the um, all of the text within those list items is now going to take on that font so you can change the font um, that you're using in the widget very easily by just using the built-in tools that are built into Muse and we thought that that was the most appropriate way of giving you the capability so let's change let's see how this font changes now so we can see now that we've taken on that nice um, Lato font and everything's looking nice and neat let's just take a look at this in responsive now as well so if we bring this down the page we can see we've got that three column split still got three columns because we said large was going to be three columns the next one down standard was going to be three columns then we get down to let's say a tablet view and we've got two columns and then take it all the way down to the mobile view and you can see that we go to a one column split so that's all the settings for the um, blog list widget we hope that you find that useful and thanks for watching